everyone and welcome to the Coffee Break Programming Course, Lecture 22 and we will follow the previous lecture and we will continue to talk about the loops today. So we will remember the loops in C++ which we saw in the previous lecture and today the main emphasis will be on the while loop, another loop, and then we will see the common thing, one common thing about the for and while loops. So this is a remembering of the all three loops from the previous lecture. The for loop was the loop with the counter and now we will talk about the while loop or which is also called the loop with a precondition because the loop will start with the condition. And the while loop in the C++ language looks like this. It is a very simple command actually because as we can see here we only have two things to specify here. So after the keyword while in brackets here we can see only one thing. This is different from the for loop where there were three different com uh, components in the brackets. But here we can see only one thing, only one logical expression. And if this logical expression is true, we go into the loop body here and we perform the commands located in the loop body. And that is it. After we have performed all the commands of the loop body, we have reached the end of the loop body, we just go back to this place where is the logical expression and we start the next iteration of the while loop by, by again looking at the expression. If the expression is still true, we again perform all the commands of the loop body and again go back to the logical expression. And if the logical expression is false, we end the execution of the while loop when we go further to the next command in our program. So, the logical expression, if true, we enter into the while loop body, if false, it ends the loop, just as I explained until a while ago. And the loop body is to be executed as long as the, as the logical expression is true and also in this case if there is only one command in the loop body the curly brackets are optional as with every block basically in the C++ language. So let's see some example again the same example as before print out all integer numbers from 1 to 100 and some possible solutions how we can do it using the while loop. So basically if we compare this solution from the one uh, from the previous lecture where we saw the for loop for the same problem, so here we can see that the starting command is done before the while loop and the third component in the for loop is uh, located here as the last command of the while loop and actually we also saw the one possible solution in the for loop case that it could be done like that and then the first and the third component had been left empty but in the while loop we always do it like that if we need to do some preparations we do it as uh, separate commands before the while loop actually starts and if we need to increase for example the uh, the counter or the loop variable, we do this increment or decrement or anything else as the final, for example, final uh, command of the loop body. And in this case, if x is less than 101, we go into the while loop and we print out the value of x and space after that, and then we increase x by 1 and we go back to here, we examine again the uh, condition. And again, if it is still true, now we know that x is 2, it is still true, we again go into the whole body, we print out x, which is now 2, and we increase x by 3, and so on. And again, of course, we must be sure about the borders, so we start printing out numbers with exactly 1, and we will end printing numbers with exactly 100, again, in this case. So let's see when more solution, possible solution here is just uh, again a play with the values. We initialize the x to 0 and 
it means that we have swapped around those two commands in the loop body. We start by increasing x to 1 and then we print out the first value of x. So we again start printing out numbers by exactly 1, not by 0 here. And also the ending, this uh, condition has changed. So now we will end um, the execution when, when this is not anymore true. X is great, uh, less than 100. Because the final, for example, when X is 99, this is still true. Then we will increase X to 100 and print out 100 here. And uh, this is the last number that we need to print out, 100. And then we go back to here and we examine again this condition, 100 less than 100 is false and the while loop ends. So we don't need to go one more time inside the full, uh, inside the while loop body to print out 101. So again, the borders are correct. And one more possible solution here. Uh, yeah, this is uh, just to demonstrate that again, we can combine those two loop body commands into one command using this shorthand notation to see C out x plus plus. This is the same as uh, as this uh, sequence here. First of all, we print out x and then we increase x by one. And so now we have only one command in the loop body and it means that we can also omit those curly brackets and don't write them here. So this is a very simple command actually. And now let's uh, just uh, look a bit at uh, the iterations of for and uh, while loops. So meaning that how many times can actually a for loop execute? And how many times can a while loop execute? So uh, if we think about the maximal iteration count, then there is no limit actually. We can build an infinite loop that uh, executes forever. So there is not, not an upper limit uh, of how many times can a for loop or a while loop can execute. Okay? And if we think about the minimal iteration count, the minimal iteration count, how many times can a loop execute, is actually zero. We can build a loop that uh, doesn't execute even once because the, uh, every execution for both of those loops starts with inspecting the condition, the logical expression, and it can, uh, it can be so that the logical expression is false right from the very beginning. Let's see a couple of examples. For example, here, uh, something similar to, to our example, in this case, uh, uh, it could appear that uh, we print out numbers starting from 0 to, to 9. But actually, if we look a bit closer, this expression here, the logical expression x is greater than 10, means that this is false right from the beginning. Okay, If we would like to print out numbers from 0 to 9, then we should have written x is less than one, less than ten. Okay, but if we write it like that, x is greater than ten. It is false because as x is zero from the beginning, and this is already false, and we don't perform this command even once. So the end, uh, the for loop ends immediately, right before the first execution. And the same, of course, uh, applies to, to the while loop. Also in this case, if we initialize x by uh, the value of 0 and we write while x is greater than 10, again, this means that the while loop ends immediately before starting the first execution. So it can be so. Maybe this uh, example is not uh, very illustrative, but it's just to prove the point that it can occur that the loop executes zero times. It is not anything special. So it is, it is normal for for and while loops. Um, 
And for example, if we remember the last uh, homework where we had to print out numbers from A to B, and if it uh, wasn't said in the description of the homework that A is indeed less or equal to B at the very beginning, then again, this for loop had a potential to execute zero times. For example, if a user entered uh, A equal to, let's say, 5 and B equal to 3, from 5 to 3, the interval is empty because A is greater than B. And in this case, also this uh, co uh, condition here, the logical expression, this expression is false right from the beginning. And uh, so it means that uh, we don't print out any numbers, we don't execute the for loop uh, even once. And this is a very normal situation here. Okay, so this is it for today. We saw the loops in the C++ language once more, and we saw the while loop in more detail, and we saw what is one common thing of those two uh, loops, for and while. And uh, this is indeed a common thing for those two loops, and in the next lecture we will see how the third loop is a bit different in this way. But before the next lecture, stay tuned to my channel, because tomorrow will be the homework about the while loop. So please subscribe to my channel, and see you soon! <laughs>